This is Southern Cross News with Rachel Williams. A 26-year-old Tasmanian man has died after losing control of his ute and crashing at Meander overnight. Emergency services attended the Nuttings Road scene around 20 past nine last night. They worked to free the man who was trapped. Medical treatment was then provided, but the man died at the scene. He was the only occupant of the vehicle and was travelling west at the time. Police say speed may have been a factor. A report is now being prepared for the coroner and anyone with information should contact Crime Stoppers. Meanwhile, a 22-year-old Bernie man has had his car seized after he was clocked travelling at 180 kilometres per hour on the Bass Highway at Sulphur Creek last night. The driver also returned a blood alcohol reading twice the legal limit. He was arrested, charged and bailed to appear in court at a later date. His white hold newt will be clamped for 28 days. Police are using the incident to remind motorists that speeding and drink driving can result in catastrophic outcomes. Tasmania has ranked the second worst in the nation when it comes to improving smoking rates. The Australian Medical Association scoring the state an E and giving it a dirty ashtray runner-up award. But the state government says it's acting on the issue. In a week that's been all about health for the state government, today it was our smoking rates that Michael Ferguson had to answer to. A new AMA report revealing the Tasmanian government is the second worst in the country at controlling tobacco, scoring an E on par with Victoria and behind only the Northern Territory. Tasmania has for many years uh, had a very low score on the AMA's um, uh, tobacco report. The peak health body recommends the state government eliminate smoking zones in outdoor drinking areas, ban all e-cigarette sales and marketing and says it should provide consistent funding for education campaigns. There's no doubt that uh, the Liberal government here in Tasmania is not doing enough when it comes to pre preventative health. Smoking is just another example where this government uh, isn't putting enough money in. We've tripled the uh, tobacco seller licence fee, which is not just going to resource additional compliance, uh, but it's also going to be used for additional uh, public education, which I call quick campaigns. The Health Minister says he will implement new legislation in Parliament next week to amend the Public Health Act, which will include banning the sale of e-cigarettes to people under 18. Meanwhile, Mr Ferguson also today toured the site of what will soon be the Northwest Regional Hospital's pre-administration clinic for surgeries. The hospital receiving $700,000 in the budget for the upgrade, with patients set to benefit. I think their whole surgical journey will be more comfortable, be more pleasant, better planned. It'll be best practice. Monika Dadson, Southern Cross News. The Salvation Army is urging Tasmanians to dig deep during this weekend's Red Shield doorknock appeal. Hundreds of volunteers are working across the state with the charity hoping to raise over a quarter of a million dollars to go to directly to people in need. How are you, Annette? Yeah, we're doing very well. At this time of year, as much as any, it becomes vital simply because the cold weather impacts people's heating bills, it impacts those that are on the streets, it increases illnesses. There's a whole range of reasons why at this time of year it's vital that we're able to continue the support we provide. Those without change in their pockets, the Salvos offer tap and go services at a number of collection points. A service was held at Hobart Cenotaph this afternoon to commemorate the 76th anniversary of the Battle of Crete. The conflict saw Australian, British and Greek forces defending the island against German troops during the Second World War. Under today's gloomy sky, the service remembered the hundreds of lives lost in the Battle of Crete in 1941. Members of the Greek community, Tasmania's governor and the armed forces, some of the members laying wreaths, all commemorating the significant losses encountered during the battle, which lasted 10 days and which began when Nazi Germany started an airborne invasion on the island. Look, in this centenary of Anzac, it's really important that we uh, commemorate these key, key milestones and certainly the Battle of Creek 76th anniversary this year is one of those very important milestones where Commonwealth forces along with Greek forces really uh, fought, fought hard in, in that conflict. The service remembering how the strong bond was forged between Australian and Greek troops, leading to many families immigrating to Australia after the war. Some of them uh, helped hide them and they helped evacuate these people, these servicemen off the island and 
and that's why we're here today. The fact that someone else so far away would come to help him, you know, um, certainly turned around and, uh, you know, uh, made, made an impression on the Greek people. It was an important time for us fighting side by side with the Greeks uh, in, in a turning point in World War II. The occasion commemorated at various services nationwide. At the going down of the sun and in the morning, we will remember them. Louise Hedger, Southern Cross News. It was billed as the match of the round and it certainly lived up to the hype with Clarence defeating ladder leaders North Launceston in what could be a grand final preview. There was little love lost between the two TSL powerhouses all afternoon. The Roos showed good touch around goal early but the Bombers were never far away as the umpires plucked 50s out around the ground. Wall showed his versatility up forward as ill-discipline continued to spark spot fires. Couch's dominance across half forward paid off on the scoreboard, but Clarence were beginning to kick away, building a steady lead for the rest of the day. And while North owns the top of the ladder, Clarence owned the day. Five goals to one, setting up the win in the third, the final margin 17 points. At the Twin Ovals, coach Aaron Vince didn't hold back after the Tigers' scoreless first term against Devonport. To belittle your game, because I will f drop every single f one in this if you're not going to put in the effort today. I don't care who you are, right? Show some Show what the to you. From there, it was either divine intervention or the four-goal breeze kicking in as Kingborough worked its way back into the contest by the half. Despite trailing at the final change, a five-goal to two final quarter would prove enough to get the home side season back on track. Victors by 11. At Windsor Park, Glenorchy's horror run of form has extended into a fourth week, managing just four goals for the game against an accurate Launceston. The Blues kicking six straight in the first quarter alone. The only blip, a one-goal third. It mattered little in the thumping 11-goal win. And Lauderdale have had a massive percentage booster at home, putting on a clinic against an undermanned Bernie. The Dockers struggling to make any dent on the scoreboard as they tried to stem the goal blitz at the other end. The Bombers piling on the pressure to record a thumping 112-point win. Andrew McCarthy, Southern Cross News. The Hobart Chargers' dream run at the Derwin Entertainment Centre has come to a crashing halt after going down to Nunawading last night. The visitors maintaining the edge for most of the game, with a late surge from Hobart failing to bridge the gap in the dying minutes. Keen to claim another big scalp, the Chargers trailed early. The eight-point quarter-time margin edging out to 11 by the half. Early in the third, the home side began to find its range, but the Spectres continued to outmuscle the smaller Chargers squad, with inaccuracy from the line frustrating fans. The deficit started to blow out in the last. Hobart made one last push, but it wouldn't do. None of Wadding were home by five. Meanwhile, the Chargers women's team have come from nowhere to trample the Spectres. Shana Thompson and Kathleen Shear leading from the front as the home side came from 17 points down early in the last to claim a remarkable four-point win. Brilliance from Shear is generally expected, but Thompson's efforts in the dying stages show she's one to watch in the second half of the season. In last night's other games, the Launceston Tornadoes were crushed by the Geelong Supercats 95-59. It was better news for the Northwest Thunder, sneaking home by five points. To Soccer and South Hobart have been ruthless around goal to blast Olympia off the park at Darcy Street. The first coming from Hamlet in the 13th minute before Turner made it 2-0 four minutes later. Nothing went right for the Warriors in a horror afternoon. Hamlet with his second later in the half before Morton capitalised on the chaos to make it 4-zip. The second half produced more of the same despite Olympia tightening in defence. The final score an impressive 6-2 win to South. In today's other game, Devonport easily accounted for Launceston City, while last night Kingborough returned to the winners list with a surprise 1-0 victory over Zebras. Andrew McCarthy, Southern Cross News. Hello again. It was a relatively average day across the state today. Hobart a late maximum of 14 degrees. Launceston and Burnie 16, 17 the top in Devonport. 18 was the state's maximum today at Grove and on Flinders Island. 17 for King Island and Maydina. 16 for Lowhead, Wynyard and St Helens. There's a broad band of middle and high level cloud over Tasmania. Speckly low level cloud in the west of the Bight and to the south of WA associated with a cold air mass. Closer in shows wispy high-level cloud over the state moving in from the northwest. 
Tomorrow's chart shows the cold front crossing Tasmania in the early morning with a high in the Tasman Sea. Looking to the water and north to northwesterly winds, 20 to 30 knots, shifting west to southwesterly at 15 to 20 knots about the west, north and south in the morning with seas up to three metres. Moving on to the warnings and there's a strong wind warning for all coastal waters except Banks Strait, Franklin Sound and east of Flinders Island. There's also a small craft wind alert for the lakes. On to tomorrow's forecast now and it's looking wet. 13 for Hobart, 14 at Richmond and rain easing 12 degrees at Ouse. Rain easing across the north, 14 for Launceston and Devonport, 12 in Deloraine. 13 in Burnie, showers and 13 for Curry and 11 degrees at Strawn. Rain easing across the east, 15 at St Helens, Swansea and Whitemark. The forecast now and get ready to rug up. We'll see showers on Monday with snow to 900 metres in the morning. On Tuesday, showers easing but possible thunderstorms and hail about the west and south and a frosty start on Wednesday but fine conditions except for showers in the west and far south. Across the country tomorrow now and sunny conditions in Perth, showers in Adelaide and Melbourne, a sunny 23 in Sydney and parts cloudy for Brisbane and Cairns. That's all your news for now. Thanks for joining us. Have a great evening. Good night.